Please are in listen-only mode. Hello, and uh, thank you for all for attending the uh, today's session on uh, building your Autodesk or AutoCAD IQ. Um, today's uh, topic is going to be an introduction to the uh, customer user interface uh, file. Uh, my name is uh, David Pothier. I'm uh, going to be helping uh, moderate the session and uh, conducting some polls and uh, you know, dealing with any kind of questions that go along. Uh, the presenter today is uh, Volker, and uh, he's an absolute expert in the CUI. He knows everything there is to know about it. And uh, we also have uh, Stephen Bissett and uh, Nauman with us, uh, one of our expert elites, which we're happy to have here on the session today. Uh, so before we get started uh, with the actual session, I just want to do a couple of quick uh, polls. I'm um, going to just ask you uh, if you just go ahead and let us know if this is your first uh, webinar with us in this uh, series that we're presenting or if uh, you've been here before. And uh, it actually looks like a uh, fair number of uh, first-timers uh, today, Volker, about 20% uh, new people. Um, oh, it's nice to see. Yeah, always great. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, close that, and uh, thank you for all those new folks, and thanks for the folks that are returning. And uh, also just want to see uh, kind of which products people are using. So uh, if you can let us know, AutoCAD uh, Limited Technology, which one of our quiz questions a couple weeks ago, or uh, AutoCAD, or one of the verticals, or something else. And it looks like... Uh, the majority using, uh, oh, just jumped over, so the majority using AutoCAD uh, followed by LT, and then the civil map, and then the other verticals. And just let that finish a little bit more. Okay, so about 85% of people voted. So thanks for letting us know, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do some sessions on some of the verticals in the, in the near future. So I'll uh, go ahead and close that, and uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Voco. All right. Thanks, Dave, and uh, thanks for the undue pressure you just put on me as well. <laughs> well, and thanks, everybody, for uh, either appearing here for your first webinar or for all of you returning to the webinars. So in this session, Build Your AutoCAD IQ, we're going to take a look at customization in AutoCAD. Uh, as all those returning attendees know, before we get started, we do need to take care of some housekeeping. And so the first thing is go ahead and leave uh, your questions in the chat window. The content of this particular webinar is uh, long enough that I, I'm not going to be able to uh, take any questions during the webinar. Um, I'd like to complete the entire presentation without having to uh, leave you guys um, stranded with uh, what did he just do on the screen type of thing. So uh, we'll, we will answer questions after the demo portion and uh, we'll stick around afterwards as well if the questions continue to come in. The session will also be recorded, just like all of our sessions are, and we will also make the data set available on our Autodesk Box account. Uh, this data set will contain uh, uh, the finished part, uh, menus that I'm going to be demonstrating, as well as step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to do it. Um, also, for those who, well, actually, whether you participated in our webinar on macros or didn't, I am including the data set from that session as well, just because the two work hand-in-hand. Hand. You'll want to use macros in your custom commands, and uh, uh, all that will be available to you after the webinar. You will get that uh, link in a uh, separate email. Uh, I'm hoping Dave may have it handy at some point throughout the webinar and paste it into the chat window. In the meantime, always check out our landing page. Uh, this image, of course, needs to be updated as it always does, but we sh show all of our new 
uh, newly scheduled webinars here. You can also access the YouTube playlist for the previous webinars. And you can have your associates sign up for our webinars. And speaking of signing up, it, we get a lot of um, responses after the webinar saying, hey, I don't get this follow-up email with the links. Um, are the sessions recorded? Uh, if you aren't getting that uh, follow-up email, chances are you're using um, a link sent to you possibly by a coworker. If that's the case, you should enroll in the sessions and that way you will receive that follow-up email. Uh, again, additional Q&A after the presentation and we will also uh, let you leave feedback. Uh, well, we would appreciate feedback on the current webinar. If you have any future webinar ideas, suggestions, folding, spindling, stapling. And you can also send your feedback to our web address, our email address, autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Uh, just briefly, for the new attendees, we do have a whole slew of uh, recorded webinars on our YouTube playlist, uh, which is uh, the Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist. We are today working on webinar 28. All right, so typically I also go over the Autodesk Knowledge Network website where you can get all kinds of information as far as um, uh, downloads for hot fixes and service packs. Uh, this time I wanted to show something different. We also have a getting started section there. And there's some really good stuff there. If uh, you know somebody who needs to get a better understanding of the AutoCAD basics, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the AutoCAD Basics is there. There are uh, other white papers about, uh, well, just about anything having to do with AutoCAD or even the verticals. And these are just some samples of some of the information that you can find there. We also, of course, have the links to the AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and all the verticals for their service packs and hot fixes. And it's always a good idea to check uh, to see if you uh, need an update, especially if you're experiencing some kind of a problem. Okay, so having said that and gotten that housekeeping out of the way, let's talk a little bit about today's agenda. First of all, I'm going to start with the CUI editor. What is it? Well, um, we've been tailoring AutoCAD for, well, since last century. Okay, AutoCAD came out in 1982 and we've been able to customize it to our uh, heart's desire ever since. Yeah, way to make me feel old, Volker. Yeah, <laughs> I feel that way too, trust me. <laughs> um, uh, but in the past, we would do everything through a text editor. And even nowadays, some of us old schoolers find that it's a real easy way for us to modify our custom menu. Uh, however, the structure of the menu system has changed. We now work with an XML file, which doesn't allow us to customize uh, as we would with a text editor. In some ways, it's actually a lot better and faster than having worked with that text editor. I suppose it's all your preference. I have grown to really like the CUI editor. Now, you'll notice that says CUI editor, uh, yet the title of this webinar is CUIX, right? Introduction to the CUIX. Well, um, basically, 2006, Autodesk introduced the CUI, this XML format. With AutoCAD 2010, they created the CUIX format. It's not a format. It's a container for numerous CUI files, and it just allows the CUI to load a lot faster. Basically a zip file, in fact, um, where you can, you can actually see all of the uh, um, files that are stored in there. The, um, one of the data set um, files that you can download later is um, a document describing not only what we've done in this set, uh, webinar here, 
but it has additional information about the CUI, and it also has specific functions or features uh, available for those using AutoCAD, uh, not AutoCAD LT, but AutoCAD and some of the verticals as well. It also discusses uh, the enterprise CUI. So it's a worthwhile document to download. All right, so the purpose of the CUI is to make migration actually easier. You could customize this CUI. With the next update, you can some settings, and the XML would do the add the appropriate functionality to your new newly installed styled version of AutoCAD. All right. Well, we still want to customize AutoCAD. We want to create our own stuff. So one of the things we'll co cover is uh, what to do when that something goes wrong with your customization. Basically, you've hosed the menu system. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about that some more in a moment, but there are ways to reset the CUI as well. We're going to talk about creating. Well, actually, we're going to do it. We're going to create and load a partial menu. What a partial menu is, is actually what I recommend as a preferred method for customizing. A lot of uh, users will customize the main CUI, and because of compatibility issues, even in a migration, you know, several re releases down the road, or let's say you're working for another company and they don't want you to take their CUI with them, uh, create a partial menu where you can add your own customization and you're able to load that quickly and easily into any AutoCAD application. Uh, we're going to add some custom commands to this partial menu. We're also going to add ribbon tabs and panels. And then finally, we'll end up with modifying a workspace uh, and adding the functionality of our partial menu to that workspace. As I said, the document that's in the data set goes into enterprise um, uh, menu customization as well. What an enterprise uh, menu is, just to let you uh, briefly, it's a read-only menu system that you can uh, place on a network server, perhaps. Uh, users cannot modify it, only the administrator of that menu, and then you could load a partial menu or main menu file, uh, which the user could modify and tailor. That way you don't, uh, nobody will possibly um, mess up the company standards by uh, modifying that corporate menu. And this could be used for standalone users as well. So, um, you know, or, or individual users working it, you know, out of the house, home office or whatever. So having said that, I am going to switch over to AutoCAD, and uh, there we are. This is actually AutoCAD LT. So let's uh, take a look at uh, some things we want to take care of, uh, first of all. And I'm going to just show it through the options dialog. Our customization files, and I right mouse clicked over the uh, command line. Our customization files are in the Files tab of the Options dialog. And what I've done is, right here you'll see we have Customization Files, Main Customization File. This is typically the ACAD.CUIX, um, or in AutoCAD LT, it's ACADLT.CUIX. Then here we could add that Enterprise custom file if we wanted to. We also want to um, have a location for our custom icons, all right? So typically, um, everything is going to go to this path right here. Your CUI that gets installed with AutoCAD is here. Um, there's a subfolder for icons. Um, any customization you do, any user files are going to be here. But I like to create a different folder, which I did. And in this case, it's for on the desktop, but I call it customization. I could have called it Fred, but this is more professional. And um, 
that is in my path along with the uh, subfolder icons for the custom icons that I'll be using. So what I'm saying is when you first modify a, uh, any existing menus, uh, it may be a good idea to go to this folder and make a backup of that. I tend to not to do this because <laughs> I feel I know what I'm doing, but, and I'm not saying you don't, but uh, as you get comfortable with stuff, you know what could go wrong, what, what won't. There are other ways to get that uh, menu system back. Um, but it is a good idea to have a backup at a certain stage of your customization. So it's like anything in AutoCAD, save and save often. Actually, anything in the software world, save and save off, often. So this is the location that I've added. I'm going to click OK here to close this. And I'm going to go to the Manage tab. And this is where we have the CUI command, which opens up the Customize User Interface dialog. I typically tend to type in CUI. The CUI editor is composed of several different panes depending on what you're doing by default here. We have three, but if I were to select, uh, say, this control here, then I would have a button and a properties panel, just like the properties pan manager or palette in AutoCAD. Right now, we're seeing all the commands that are in AutoCAD LT. And you can filter here for all commands and controls. Controls are items like the uh, um, layer drop-down uh, control, uh, things like that. And uh, uh, you can, like I said, you can filter through this. You can also filter for custom commands or commands that are only in partially loaded menus. You can see we have partial customization files here. I can search for a command. And so let's say, oh snap, there we go, oh snap, settings is what it came up with. It does not, uh, it's kind of weird how it filters. It filters more by a descriptive name instead of the actual command. So um, there are certain things, if you were to type in the command, uh, it, you probably wouldn't find it. Now. In AutoCAD, there's actually an option for legacy. Oh, it's right here as well. Sorry, I haven't done this in LT in a while. But if you do legacy, then it'll show the command itself. Okay, so uh, it's up to you how you want to filter for it. But this is uh, the useful tool for that. And you can also create new commands here as well. Search or create new. And we're going to create some new commands here. Go ahead and uh, backspace on that. Let's put this on all commands. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do actually is um, create a partial menu because I like to keep my stuff uh, compartmentalized. I like to have that partial menu that I can uh, that can travel with me. Okay, so. If you don't already have one created, the easiest way to do it is to go to the Transfer tab. Here, either in the Customizations in New File or here in Customizations in Main, main File, you can create your new customization file. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's created that new file. I'm going to go ahead and click the Save button to give it a name. And I want to go to my desktop because I've done my run through to make sure everything works well, which doesn't mean I won't have my awkward moment, but you never know. Maybe one day I'll, I'll be flawless in demonstrating this stuff. Let's go ahead and call this tools. I don't have to type in the extension. I'll just save it as a CUIX. And notice it now says Tool CUIX. All right, so we've created it. This tab is also useful for transferring from another 
CUI or old MNS file, MNU file, into a current um, customization file. I do most of my work here though. The transfer, I, I rarely ever use it unless I am creating a new CUI from scratch. Okay. Now, we have to still load this as a partial menu. You'll see there's, it's not listed here. All we've done is create it. So I right mouse click over this. I could also use the buttons up here. I'm going to select load partial customization file. There it is, the one I just created. I double clicked on it. And now it has set that file current. And if we click on this, the stuff that's in there, the content, you'll see there are no commands. But we could easily create toolbars, uh, menus, but they're non-existent right now. It's a blank canvas, so to speak. So the first thing I'm going to do is create me some commands. And I've got uh, three of them. I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I, I don't want to type in all these macros. I want to save a little bit of time. And you can kind of see it a little better on the screen that way too, more better. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and stay. Let it stay on top. Okay. Um, so I'm going to create a revision cloud command that will prompt me to uh, set a layer current and prompt me to, um, uh, it, oh, it also draws a rectangle, and then it'll convert that rectangle into a revision cloud. Okay, and this is where that data set I'm including with this one comes in handy because it talks more about uh, these macros. And I can't spend a lot of time on it. That's why I want you to take a look at that data set. But Control-C, Control-C, Control-C cancels any command. C layer is the auto command for current layer, which will list it and allow you to change to another layer. Okay, so cancel command, change a layer, semicolon means enter, change to layer red, so I'd better have a red layer, layer called red in this drawing later. Hit enter to uh, have changed that layer, go into the rectangle command, enter, pick two points, that's what the backslashes are uh, for the rectangle, go into the rev cloud command, Enter and uh, <laughs> settings. Oh, good grief! Now I can't remember what the two what two functions I put in here. It's no big deal. The O is for object. Um, basically, if you type this in at the command line, you're going to have options for S, C. Uh, Dave, if you could look that up real quick. I can't yeah, believe I put uh, it. Rev Cloud S is for style and C yeah. is for calligraphy. Thank you very much. I, I, I could not spit those words out for the life of me. <laughs> anyway, after it, it prompts me for object, enter, it then uh, says, okay, pick the object, enter, to finish creating that rev cloud. The other ones set the Osmode system variables to endpoint, midpoint, quadrant, and node. And then another one, odd Osmode set to end mid center node. So if I switch back and forth between these different OSAPs settings, um, all I have to do is click on a button on the ribbon. So let's create this command. We are, I have the tools menu current because I want to create these commands in this menu, not the custom menu. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, whoops, <laughs> user error, awkward moment, right? I'm going to create a new command here. By default, it's called command one. Notice it has button images up here, the name command one, and it has a, the beginning of a macro. All right, well, I want to rename all that. I'm not sure why this isn't staying on top. doesn't matter. I'm going to copy this and replace command one with it. Control V. Oh, I because of PowerPoint. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy a description. Some of the stuff you, you don't need, but I mean, if you've got the fields, use them, right? So I've just copied that into the description field. Then uh, I, I haven't created a help file for this, and that's 
whole nother story. So, uh, but if you have extended help, you can certainly use it. This is the command that I want to display. And then this is the macro that I want to function when I click on the button. You'll see there's a little ellipse button. What this does, it allows me to bring up this little editor where I could have just uh, typed in the stuff or pasted it for that manner. Uh, but uh, it was just as easy for me to paste it in there. Uh, we can put tags, and when you're searching for your command in that search field right here, this is what um, some of the key words that would be used there. So um, tags, and for this here, I'll just go ahead and copy and paste in there and click OK. Then we, of course, want an image. You can either use an existing one and even modify it. I'm not going to spend any time going into the image editor. I have some pre-built images here. And so for this one, RevCloud, I've created one RVC. I just double-clicked on it. And I'm going to apply it to both for large and, uh, and um, small images. And I'm going to click Apply to save the changes. Until you hit Apply, nothing is saved. Let's go ahead and create another new command for the Osmode system variable. And this one here is, like I said, endpoint, midpoint, control V. And my description basically does everything, shows everything that's happening. So that is, this description, by the way, is what you see in the tooltip. And we call this. M E M Q N. There we go. Macro. All right. So this macro is a little different, though. The two two Osmode ones. This one here has an apostrophe, and what that does is, if I'm in the middle of a command such as the line command, realize I have my O snaps wrong. I want to not interrupt that command. So it's a transparent command function is what it is. It will say, okay, stop the command, change my system variable Osmode to 27, and then continue with the line command. That's what that apostrophe is for. And so I want to be sure to replace the uh, control C's there. Go ahead, control C. Oh, yeah. For some reason, that field there does not accept input. You actually have to go into the dialog for this particular tags. And uh, glad that happened so that we could see what was going on there. And that was the OS27 bitmap. You can use bitmaps or PNG files. I'm going to click apply and one more and we'll get past this point here. So this one is end mid center node. New command. Let's go description. And command display name. And the command So again, I want to replace the control C for my tags. And maybe I wanted to be a little more descriptive with the tags, but um, not going to happen in this demo. And then I want an image here. So And I click Apply. So we now have our three buttons.
All right, great. So we've got the three commands here, and we've got some buttons for them, but uh, now we want those on a toolbar. Or, well, you could make a toolbar. Uh, we're going to go and create a rim ribbon. Now, the ribbon, uh, there's a procedure to this. We first need to create a ribbon tab. Then we create a ribbon panel. Then we add the commands to the panel and add the panel to the tab. Uh, although once the panel is already on the tab, you can add any commands to it. So right now I'm going to go to ribbon here and I'm going to select tabs, right mouse click, new tab. And we're going to go ahead and call this tools custom. Oop. Having done that, I'm now going to go ahead and create a new panel. And this panel, what did I call it? I'm sure it was something like tools. Um, yeah, tools annotate. And once we've created that panel, I'm going to create another new panel. And this one here, tools, oh snap. And again, you can call them whatever you want. I'm also going to go ahead and on this panel create a new, whoops, let's go, where do we want that row? Oh yeah, tools OSNAP. I'm selecting the tools OSNAP panel and creating a new row. And we'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> Having created these um, panels, I'm now going to go ahead and drag and drop these commands to the appropriate panel. So, for example, the revision cloud, I'm going to go ahead and drag over to row one of the tools annotate panel, and it just plops it in there. The reason I go around like that is because this menu structure can be very long, and if I just were to go up like this, see how that, uh, it's kind of kind of quirky there, okay? It makes it difficult when you have a lot of expanded branches. So I just find it easier to go around until I find the right um, uh, panel, and I'll drop it in there under row one. I'm going to go ahead and take this and drop it in under row one. And just for grins, what I'm going to do right now, just to show you, we can use existing commands out of our um, main CUI or any other partial CUI and add those to our custom CUI. Uh, and there are many different ways to do this, but I just kind of want to demonstrate this one. I'm going to make the main CUI current. And I'm going to search for the command OSNAP settings. This actually brings up the OSNAP dialog. Okay. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to right mouse click. And I'm just going to select copy. You can also drag and drop. But uh, with this menu being current, it would be hard to do that. So I've copied to the clipboard. Now making tools current. And I'm going to go back here to the panels, and I am going to select row two, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that into row two. For row one, where I have my, uh, whoops, I must have copied that, the wrong one in there, didn't I? Yeah, let's get rid of. Revision Cloud, you can easily remove these here. Yes, I do want to delete it. And center note, that's the one I wanted. The one, there we go. All right, now we've got the right ones. Okay, so uh, uh, I've added this to row two and these to row one. One of the things you can do by default, the button style is small without text, and typically I wouldn't do this on my own menus, but this is a demo, okay? So I'm going to do small with text, 
and see how you get that description that you would normally see in the tooltips. I'll do the other one as well, just so you can see how it'll look on the ribbon. Uh, you'll also see why, well, hopefully you'll understand why I don't like it that much, but everybody likes to work differently. This one we're just going to leave, and we're already seeing a panel preview right here. All right, at this stage, since I've got those uh, that panel, the panels created, I'm going to add those to my tab. And again, all I have to do is grab that panel, drag and drop, drag and drop. And so there's my custom tab. At this point, what I'm going to do is apply this, and I'm going to click OK. Um, typically, it's best after you've made a full change like that to your ribbon, is to go ahead and click OK so that um, AutoCAD can update the database. I, I'm not sure why this needs to be done in AutoCAD itself. I think it it, it actually closes out of the CUI editor uh, in LT. I notice it didn't, so I'm not sure if that's my imagination or um, awkward moments that I have by myself. Uh, but either way, I nowadays, just to save time, will actually just close the CUI editor, and then I'll come back to it to make the final changes. Because as you may have noticed, we don't see that Tools tab up there. That's because it hasn't been added to a workspace yet. Okay, we have uh, one default workspace in LT, drafting and annotation. I've, I created a new one called Demo, all right? But um, what I'm going to do now is add my, um, add a workspace that will show the customization from my tools um, in, in the, um, in, in my workspace. Okay, so the tools menu is here. Here's the demo drafting and annotation. But what I'm going to do is create a new workspace by making a copy of this because I may already have workspace uh, information that I've saved and I want to have it um, with the this tools menu, a, a copy of that. So I'm going to duplicate this. The thing about workspaces is, is that they're saved in the main menu, main customization file. If you have a workspace in your partial menu, AutoCAD doesn't acknowledge it, although you can transfer it to your uh, main CUI. So just be aware of that. So um, I'm going to right mouse click, select rename, and I'm going to call this, I'm just putting my initials in front of it. I'm kind of vain that way, I guess. I don't know. Just Make, let's me know it's mine. And what I can do here is I can set this current. And I can also make it the default for when I launch AutoCAD. Doesn't have to be on top, although I could um, drag it to the top here. And so it'll, in the list down here for the workspace uh, control, it'll appear as the top item. All right, having done all that, um, having, I'm going to click apply real quick here. We've got that custom workspace and now I'm going to click on customize workspace and everything here turns blue. What I'm going to do now is expand my branches here on the tools, the custom tools menu and there's the tabs. Okay. Just to, just to prove to you it's there. This is partially selected. I'm going to click in it. That clears it. Click in it again, and that selects everything. I could have just clicked up here under tabs, and it would have selected every tab in this menu file. And note that it now adds it to my custom menu. Once I'm finished, I'm going to go ahead here and click Done. I'm going to go ahead and select Apply, and click OK. So still nothing has happened up here. 
going to my workspaces. Switching between them refreshes the menu system. I've had a lot of tech support calls about this where people say, hey, I've, I've added this to my workspace, but I'm not seeing the new tab. And for whatever reason, you need to switch back and forth to refresh your workspace. And uh, that gives you the customization you want. Now, uh, before we test out these tools here, one other thing I like to do with my workspaces, you probably, if you've been to these sessions before, I always like to have my properties palette docked. Okay, so allow docking, and I typically dock it here. I also want to save this to the current workspace, which is my VC drafting and annotation. I can use the settings here. I can type WS. S-A-V-E, W-S, save, workspace save, or um, I can save current. It's the same thing. I'll go ahead and select this. I'll select this, my workspace, and save. Yes, I want to replace it. And one additional thing you want to do is go into workspace settings. Um, again, you can bring things to the top of the list here. I'm not sure why it didn't update, so, but uh, I'm going to make my workspace equal VC drafting and annotation. So when I launch AutoCAD LT, that's what it's going to do. And if I wanted to, I could move that to the top of the list and actually add a separator like that. Important thing here, if you want to save your workspace, then leave it on do not save changes to workspace. We get a lot on this as well. Um, if I were to select this bottom option, automatically save workspace changes, anytime I open up a different palette or move a palette to a different location, once I exit AutoCAD, uh, it will save those changes. So I prefer to have, be consistent in how AutoCAD looks when I launch it. Uh, obviously, it's your preference. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to switch over to Tools Custom. Here's our revision cloud. Notice the tooltip. Our EMQN Osmod, our EMCN Osmod. So where's that OSNAP dialog? Row 2. There it is. OSNAP Settings. Here's my Rev Cloud. It changed it to layer red. It's prompting me to draw a rectangle. And it prompts me to then select the rectangle and it turns it into a revision cloud. Finishes the command. Watch the command line now. I'm going to click on OSNAP endpoint midpoint. I'll actually type OS now to get into that dialog. Endpoint, midpoint, node, quadrant. Endpoint, midpoint, center, node. And again, I'll go into the OSNAP dialog. Endpoint, midpoint, center, node. So very cool, huh? There, We could spend a couple of days, not a couple of days, but most of a day customizing AutoCAD, talking about it. And frankly, when Ever I get um, a support request for um, somebody customizing the CUI, I learn quite a bit most of the time because everybody does things different. And some of the things I've seen done with the CUI, um, I wouldn't have done to my 1971 Galaxy 500 back in the day. All righty, so having said that, again, there's a lot more to it. You can use those macros, which I um, uh, have in the data set, which I've included in the data set. You can use those to um, create your own custom commands. I've also provided some additional resources here 
in the PowerPoint deck. And in fact, there's a link to the webinar for um, uh, macros. Before I take questions, I just want to point out that next week we will do a productivity tips and tricks. Uh, this is a sequel to the original where we got a lot of great response on that first one. And then, yes, AutoCAD 2016. It is being, uh, well, it'll be available Monday, I believe. And we are going to have our next three on AutoCAD LT followed by AutoCAD. So we're going to show what's common in both apps and then the new features that really you only get in AutoCAD, followed by a back to, back to basics modify commands webinar. I think that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> Actually, I could talk about this all day, but time won't allow. So I think, so I think what everybody wants to know is if you have a picture of that uh, car. <laughs> Not anymore. I haven't had that car for about a decade now. <laughs> I loved it, though. <laughs> uh, so there are a couple of questions here, Volker. Um, uh, Adam was asking if you should set autosave when you're working on your workspace. So I think it, you kind of talked about that a little bit. But. Yeah, you, you, the auto... Um, if you should turn it off or, or what, when you're working on the workspace or? Oh, I see. Um, should you just turn it on when you're making changes or should you leave it it's, off? It's not going to affect um, working with the CUI. Um, the CUI is basically um, a modal, um, is it non-modal? I forget the difference. Um, it's basically a dialogue that's not going to allow you to do anything else in AutoCAD until you're done with that dialogue. And Therefore, the autosave, it'll work in the background uh, if you've made changes, but it's not going to affect the customization you're doing. And uh, Brian was asking if you could demonstrate how to make a flyout, but that's probably uh, a little bit too time-consuming at the moment. Right? It, it is. Uh, there is one thing I did want to show. Uh, for some reason, when you talked about autosave there a moment ago, it dawned on me that I didn't ad-lib that. <laughs> uh, and everybody who knows me is that uh, when I typically ad-lib, I usually have that awkward moment, right? Um, just briefly, before I take any more questions, I'm typing in CUI. I was going to show you this. You know, I talked about backing up your file, but um, hey, if you screw up any menu, partial or the um, main menu, you have two options here. One is to restore that to the last previous uh, set, of, the last time you clicked apply, okay, prior to that. So um, it, it does keep a backup copy. If you totally mess things up, on the partial or on the um, main, you can reset it to its defaults. So uh, just be aware of that. Right mouse click over the menu name. Uh, I'll go over one of the partials here real quick. And you'll see that um, uh, we have that restore option here as well. We haven't done anything to it, so um, it's not going to allow me to reset it. Actually, it the Chronicle one rebuilds itself. but. Um, yeah, so just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry I digressed. Any other questions? Uh, there's a question about, uh, I, I guess it's when AutoCAD LT for the Mac is shipping. And uh, I don't know if, I, if we have that date, but it's typically a little bit be after the AutoCAD for the PC. Yeah, I think last year, wasn't it around July? Yeah. Somewhere uh, around then. We um, We don't... Yeah, we don't have a date, and um, chances are we wouldn't be able to tell you if we did. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> being blunt. <laughs> uh, and uh, Volker, were any of those links that you had on your PowerPoint uh, a link to your Autodesk University, you know, customizing the CUI class? Um, okay, so uh, frankly, no. And there is a reason for that, yeah, because I basically condensed that AU class for this webinar, updating it to the latest release, which won't be the latest release much longer. All the information for that AU um, uh, 
and more is in this webinar, though. So, uh, good question. I plagiarized myself. <laughs> well, I was just going to paste in the uh, link to the uh, to the class if you if you if there was stuff in there that we didn't cover. But well, um, you know, you could certainly do that because I mean, there's always going to be a little bit different in each webinar. You know, in that one. In that web, um, I don't have the link right now, though. In that particular uh, AE session, I go through the process of creating the enterprise CUI, whereas in this one, it's only in the document I gave you. Okay. Well, I, I happen to have the link, so I want to paste yeah. it into the yeah. chat window. Sure. They may want to look at the uh, last few minutes of that webinar or even the whole thing and if they want a good laugh. Uh, by the way, we had somebody from Brazil on the on the phone, so we had some folks from uh, outside the U.S. Awesome! Wow. Okay, so that that must be it. Yeah, and there was a question. I'm not sure if I totally understand this. It says, can you copy the tool palettes that I put blocks on? to transfer to my home copy of AutoCAD. Okay, two things about that. Good 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 question. Um, I've never heard anybody say bad question before during a webinar, but that was a good question actually because it brings up two points. One, the CUI itself um, contains all the customization for AutoCAD except tool palettes and of course the ACAD PGP file. Okay, as well as the aliases. Uh, to answer your specific question, I'm going to do a control three, brings up my tool palette. I'm going to right mouse click anywhere, um, say right here on the title bar. I'm going to go to customize palettes. And here I can either export an individual palette, or if I have a group, I can export that group. Um, a palette would be exported as an XPT file and a group as an XPG file. And then you could import those, of course, using the import option on your home computer or other workstation, whatever, laptop, workstation. So hopefully that answers that. We did a whole um, uh, webinar on... Design Center and Tool Palette, so check that out if you want to know more, learn more about that. And uh, is there a way to export or import all the palettes in one click? Uh, there's not, no. Okay. And by the way, um, if anybody's on the vertical products like AutoCAD Architecture, oh, yeah. the import and export functions are not there. There's a different tool um, called the Content Browser that, uh, that you would use for kind of copying things back and forth. Yeah, because they are more intelligent objects or, you know, work differently with the app application. So, yeah. good point. And are the customiz customizations available in all versions of AutoCAD or just a specific version? So, I, again, it's, it varies a little bit, right? Because, like, uh, you can't do the export-import, but the customization of the CUI is the same in all versions. Right, and and really that's why you want to create a partial, okay? Because let's say you create all this customization. Um, the ACAD um, menu is not the primary menu in verticals, you know, such as MEP, ACA, uh, even AutoCAD map. Um, so you can't just replace the menu. Um, so if you create a partial, you can easily load that and set a workspace current and you've got your tools available. And uh, I don't see anything else at the moment, but maybe we, um, so we could probably end the, uh, the recorded part portion and just stick around for answering any more online questions for a few minutes. Yeah, let's take that last poll, though, if you would, please. Okay, Later. sure. Yeah, forgot all about the poll. Yeah, we just want to know if you're satisfied. Yeah. So we just want to know if uh, people have learned something new today. And I should stop it right now because it's 100% yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would actually be our first. 
actually even after 75%, we're still showing uh, 100%. So, so it looks like everybody's learned a little something today. And I can sleep soundly tonight. Yeah. And actually, I want to try something here just to, for fun. Uh, so you can actually share the results of the poll, which I didn't see before. So we can see that we uh, got 100% uh, yes with 80% voting. Very cool, people. Thank you very much. I'm glad we were able to show you all something new. So, um, yeah, I think um, I think we'll be uh, going to go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, thanking you all for having attended. Uh, day, we, we will stick around and answer some more questions if any come in, but um, stopping the recording now. So thank you, and we hope to see you next week for uh, all of you attendees. Thank you again. Time's valuable.